Isaac Stern was a great violinist, mentor, tireless advocate of all things cultural. He was born on July 21st, 1920, and in his eight decades of life, he did so very much and with such lasting impact that we're all still benefiting from what he did. And Michael Stern and his family and colleagues have all galvanized together and they're creating all kinds of great commemorations and celebrations. And you can check out all of that at isaacsternlegacy.org. Michael, thank you for being here. Um, thank you for your time. Delighted. You had so much scheduled and then along came COVID. And I know some things are still happening. How have your commemorations evolved? Well, like every everyone else, our lives have been upended and we are not quite sure when things are going to stabilize. And one of the casualties, of course, was this celebration, um, which is a shame, but the country is going through a lot right now. The world is going through a lot and we have to keep things in, in perspective. That said, when we started to think about what our father accomplished. Of course, he was a great musician. He was a great fiddle player. He inspired young people as a teacher, as a chamber music collaborator, as a, a, a presence. But especially in this strange time that we find ourselves in, the idea that somebody could stand up for what's right and fight for what he believed in, even when people were saying it was impossible, um, like they said when he and my mother decided Carnegie Hall was not going to be turned into an office building in a parking lot, or, um, you know, they were going to start the Jerusalem Music Center, or they were going to go to China, even though no Western musicians were allowed to go to China. Whatever it was, um, he stood up for the idea that he believes that, he always believed that music and the arts and young people were the future. And if you put the two of them together, the success of watching those possibilities come to fruition was limitless. So I think that is worth celebrating. You know, just the courageous advocacy and the relentless single-minded belief that music can matter. And he inspired so many people. Pinkas Zuckerman, Itzhak Perlman. He championed Yo-Yo Ma. Uh, luminaries, as we would call them today. And pianist Wuhan the other day told me that the single most important thing that she learned from him was this unflinching honesty about artistic intelligence. His energies, his enthusiasms, his commitments, and his leadership style. He was so inspiring in terms of his leadership. She felt that that left an indelible mark on her own artistic leadership and collaborations now. How did he inspire you? Well, you know, growing up, I, I started playing the violin when I was very young. I became a conductor later. I never thought I was going to necessarily become a professional musician, but I had his sound in my ear, which always sounded to me like someone talking. It was not... <laughs> ever simply playing the instrument, which is one of his mantras. You don't use music to play the instrument. You use the instrument to make music. The communicative power that he had in being able to speak directly through music to an, a large audience and to a, or to a single person was apparent even to me as a child. But it's the takeaway that everybody has. If you ask Midori or Yo-Yo, or Manny Axe, all these people that he loved to play with. Um, you know, and, and you mentioned people like Yitzhak and, and Pinky who were young and sort of just forming the, into the great personalities that they would become. Um, later on, Gil, Shaham, um, Fima Bronfman, all of these people understood that there was something so innately human in the way he dealt with them and in his approach to music and to life. You know, one thing about my father, which I think is, is worth mentioning because some people 
see it differently, but he was actually, I mean, he knew his own self-worth for sure, and he stood on stage and commanded attention, but he was actually not arrogant at all. And with younger colleagues, he was incredibly generous. I mean, there were moments, and certainly when they were on tour with him, Yo-Yo and Manny can tell about 357,000 very funny stories about how he was when he would be in the restaurant and wanted to order everything on the menu seven times. But deep down as a colleague, he treated them always like he would want to be treated. And the age gap and the experience difference was was completely unimportant. He always used to say, these young men and women who are, are sort of coming up and, and just... It, it gave him so much energy and inspiration and renewed sense of purpose. Isaac Stern Legacy.org is a great place to learn more about Isaac Stern in all of his attributes and capabilities. And you can also go there to share your own remembrances and tributes. Are there any tributes, Michael, that have particularly moved you? There, you know, it, they come from all sides. There have been some really big moments of celebration. But for me, the most touching thing is hearing from people, from individuals who remember something that he said to them about a certain piece or something that he did that they will never forget that made them go out and do something differently, whether it was in music or for other people. Um, that's the kind of sowing the seeds that really makes a difference. And, um, you know, there's an old saying that when you are called to your rest you should have lived a life that has earned you that rest. You should be worthy of that rest. I think my dad was worthy of his rest. I think so too. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Louise.